name is Michael Saipovarian. If you want to see me butt ass naked, come to the Masters. Every record that we make uh, is kind of, uh, Peter always says, it's like a photograph of, of where we were as a group when we made it. And, and this record uh, is that. But it's also, um, uh, for me, just on a personal level, uh, it makes good on the promise that Up made, that we as a trio uh, can, be, can be a force uh, to rival or match um, a four-piece R.E.M. with Bill Berry. It's a really dumb head, like, obvious thing to do, but I didn't want the writer's block that, that plagued me on the last record to, to rear its head on this project. And I thought, if I can put myself in a place that, that, that's easy to, easy to access other places from, uh, like Dublin, then if I got stuck, I could very simply remove myself from the place that I was and put myself somewhere else. And that's what I did. I mean, it's a real 101, you know, like, uh, you, have, you have a dilemma, you have a solution. And, and it, it was a, it's a real dumb, obvious solution, but it worked. I, 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 went to, I went to Israel and I went to France and I went to Italy and I went to um, Copenhagen and London and I just kind of flew my ass all over Europe, you know, for the summer. Uh, and a lot of it was actually, um, escaping the bad weather. If, if, if it got rainy or it was kind of cold and crappy for, for a week, I would just go somewhere where the sun was. And we were writing a summer record, or, or a record that maybe tries to capture the promise of summer uh, and present it as like a soundtrack to, to your summer or my summer. It made sense that I would go off kind of chasing the sun, and that's what I did. I'm sure the other guys probably said Cologne, right? That was, that was amazing. That was an amazing experience. We, they set us up uh, next to the, cathedral, the giant cathedral in Cologne, and it was a free concert. People came from eight or nine different countries around Germany, and uh, there were like 70,000 people there, and it was broadcast, and they went out live on the net, and it was very, very cool. Apparently, I, I didn't know this until I saw the tape of it, but somebody behind the state you know here's the stage and here's this giant cathedral and then somebody behind and across the river was sending up fireworks so about halfway through our set these fireworks started exploding over our heads and uh it was apparently beautiful <laughs> i missed it all because i was looking the, the wrong way i almost feel like the music that we're making now is more actually political in a, in a more subversive way than uh songs that are actually topical about, about political issues or what have you. Um, it's kind of a personal politic and I really, I, really like, I really like that kind of having somewhat, I mean I perceive myself as being kind of an outsider to mainstream culture um, but also being a part of mainstream culture and kind of in the middle of it so I feel, I feel a little bit like R.E.M. is a tapeworm in the belly of the beast and we're subverting things just by being ourselves and just by doing things the way that we do things and uh, that feels to me frankly more political than writing a song about acid rain yeah well they can kiss my ass whoever they are it's like it's not a it's not a return to anything you know it's like this is the this is the record that we made because of the space we're in right now you know uh a record, it's an old, it's sort of a cliched story, but a record is a snapshot of where a band is for the year, the year and a half that they're making a record. And, and uh, you know, this year's been a really great one for us. This last year and a half, we've been having a lot of fun, and we've been enjoying being a band again, and, uh, and we enjoyed making this record. You know, we had great songs, and uh, we went to some great cities to make it, and we've really had fun. You know, I guess it is the first time we've been out of the country since Fables to make a record. It, it just seemed like the right thing to do. You know, Vancouver's a great city. It's near Seattle, which is convenient for Peter and his family. Um, Dublin, of course, you know, anybody who's been there will tell you what a beautiful place Ireland is. And, uh, and it was good. You know, it just keeps, keeps it fresh and interesting for us. It's a chance to, to, to not have it be like going to work.
You know, it's 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 completely different, but somehow you're just as tired at the end of it. Um, we wanted to make this one different than your average promotional swing where you just sit and talk to journalists for five hours a day or four hours a day. And we really didn't want to do that. So we're, uh, you know, we incorporated as many fun special events as we could, a bunch of free live shows uh, with thousands and thousands of people and then some really cool small things in radio stations and uh, odd TV shows. Just whatever we could do to make it interesting. Yeah, we were down there. Uh, we were down there in November. Um, you know, I mean, in a way, it was very exciting to be living in the middle of history. Uh, I mean, because you could tell as as you were there, you knew it was all happening right around you. Al Gore was in South Beach uh, the night before the election, I think, and uh, Joe Lieberman had just come from. He was in our hotel like two days before the election. So, uh, and it was interesting. I mean, because. Uh, to be there in the vortex of all that, you could actually see all the crap that they were pulling and, uh, you know, what the state of Florida was doing to discourage Democrats and African Americans from going to the polls. And, um, you know, a lot of people whine about this and that and the other, but, you know, we saw the election being stolen. We saw the stuff going on down there that, that, uh, that was, it was rigging it for George W. Bush. And, uh, you know, I guess that's what happens when your brother's a governor. I think we learned a lot of stuff making up. Some some things were good and some things were not good that we learned. But um, I think we took a lot of the tools and the technology that we'd, we'd worked with on the last record and kind of coupled it to more melodic, uh, lush kind of material. And I guess the kind of, that, that melody is what people reminds people of our past work. But, you know, it, just, it still feels like a step forward to me. You know, I really don't know. Um, I think that, that just getting out of your daily routine affects the way you, you work on things. I don't know if you could tell that we recorded in Dublin or, or Vancouver, but just the fact you're packing a suitcase and hitting somewhere different, well, it kind of helps us anyway, inspirationally. Well, we've done, we've done a fair amount of playing. We just haven't sold tickets. And we've played everywhere from you know, 20 people in a tiny room acoustically to, uh, you know, 100,000 people in a street where we shut down a the city of Cologne or uh, in Toronto. So we get to play, which is good for us. Um, but you, you're not really faced with that kind of grueling four months of playing every night, which I enjoy, but it just didn't feel like the thing to do this time. We, we do all kinds of, you know, political and, and charitable stuff that we were continually involved in. You don't necessarily write songs about it. And also, you know, like the whole Bush administration, it's like cotton candy. What can you really say about it? You know, it's just a bunch of rich white guys that want to lower taxes for wealthy people. I mean, you know, you can be kind of incensed about it, but you also, I think it's kind of funny.